I just want the room to come down a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Eric said, I'm a producer too and I really want to submit a track, but I never feel like it's ready. And I said, Eric, that really touches me. And I have a secret to tell you, Eric. None of us ever feel like it's ready. <laughs> ever. It's Nothing you've heard tonight, I guarantee you, if you go and find that person, and please go find that person who made it, and you ask them, did you think it was ready? They're going to say, no, I wish I could fix this and do that and tweak this and rewrite this and add this layer and take out that layer and take out the vocal and put it in a Snoop Dogg sample or whatever it is they have to do. No one ever feels like it's ready. And at some point, you have to take a risk to fail in public. to get better is to fail in public and if you look back at your favorite producer and you go back to their very first five tracks what you're producing right now at home and what you've heard tonight is better than that everybody starts here and gets here over time by failing in public so groundwork is here so that we can all come together and work together to get better together thank you for being here thank you for being here Hey, did I mention we're all going to MIA later? Good. Show your stamp at the door. Go see Julio Bashmore. Cool. Hey, everybody, I want you to put your hands together when I say now for our keynote speaker who's going to give us some serious wisdom. A man with uh, many, many years of experience. Here he is. We know him and we love him. Rennie Foster. to see me fail in public? <laughs> yeah, right on. Hey, uh, listen, before I uh, do anything or talk at all, uh, I just want to call attention to something. Um, t tonight I'm going to be talking about uh, making music with purpose and building your scene, which is kind of a theme. I've been giving some talks uh, about this over the past couple of years in some other cities. I did one this summer in... Uh, Winnipeg and it went really good but tonight I'm doing really a, a small thing so um, I want to do basically uh, skip all a lot of the fluff and just just throw in a couple of ideas and then get to sort of uh, some cool stuff about what we could do about them if you think they're good ideas but um, before I do any of that uh, something you know uh, that's that's tied to this. We lost a very uh, important member of our scene this weekend, or this, this past weekend. Uh, I don't know if a lot of you uh, have heard of a local DJ named Hayden Wood, who uh, moved here from, I believe, from Montreal. And um, he was a fellow uh, resident of mine uh, with me at the same club at Gorgamish. And uh, I didn't know him super well as a friend, but we sure liked working together and seeing each other out at the clubs and stuff. And uh, he was a really great person, and um, I know usually you're supposed to give like a kind of a moment of silence for someone like that, but um, I think knowing Hayden is probably better if we gave him, made a whole bunch of noise and uh, yeah. gave him a really big applause for uh, everything that he brought to our city and to our scene, uh, Hayden Wood. Thank you very much. Cool. Okay. So, um, in, in any case, uh, first of all, before I do this, I usually make a little intro, but um, I want to get through the intro really quick because I want to get through some of this stuff really quick so that we can do Q&A. Q&A is always the best part of this, the thing, and uh, I usually try and get to it as soon as I can. So, um, is does everybody here know basically who I am or whatever? Yeah, I don't need to do that, right? Like, I made a bunch of records and some a bunch of labels and ran uh, run also a few labels myself and uh, running a couple right now and um, played in a bunch of places and all that kind of stuff. But uh, that's not why I'm speaking to you, really. Um, I'm just into to talking about this kind of stuff and uh, I don't think anything that I do is above anybody else in this room or um, or you know I'm sure a lot of people are in better situations than me in this room I'm I'm really just struggling myself and uh, you know every gig means a lot to me and every uh, record I put out and 
I'm trying to sell it desperately and you know whatnot. I'm not like I've never played in Ibiza or, or Burt Hain or any of that kind of stuff. I just uh, do my thing like everybody else in this room. So it's not like I'm up here trying to say I, I, I accomplished a whole bunch of stuff, so now I'm going to try and tell you how to do it. It's not like that at all. And most of the people who get up and in front of people and talk about stuff like this, who uh, start off that way, are often uh, really uh, sometimes full of shit. So um, I'm not like that, So just so you know. Um, okay. Right on. Okay, let me let me refer to my notes for a quick second. You like Snoop Dogg? I do. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. I like his news channel. I, I smoke weed and watch that all the time. Yeah. His Senate movement was horrible though. I like that slide. Okay. Uh, anyways, uh, what I want to tell you, one thing is. Um, what a lot of people don't know about me, besides all the dance music stuff, is that I've been basically doing this stuff since I was like 11 years old. And you can draw a line from what I started doing then to what I'm doing now, and, and uh, really not a lot has changed if you look at the core things. I, I found dance music through uh, breakdancing. I was in a dance company um, in, in, in Victoria, so I was much more into dancing uh, than I was into the actual music before I got into the music. And uh, uh, it was through mixtapes that I was given by an older DJ to practice breaking and stuff like that that got me kind of hyped on it and deciding that I was going to do it. So, uh, which is how I am. I, when I see things that, I, that I'm into, um, I just decide that I'm going to do it. Which is, which is sort of why through all that time and all that trial and error, I love meeting, uh, I, I meet a lot of people in the scene who I feel like are clued into certain parts of that, but because it's not as like natural as it was for me or some people I've met, they're, they're missing a few pieces of uh, like a perspective, you know? So rather than, rather than calling this making music with purpose and building your scene, because I'm kind of short on time, I'm gonna call it making music with the purpose of building your scene. So it's like one thing that we're talking about. And I don't really think there's any place that I've ever been that I've given a talk like this that, that has been more suitable for like what I'm talking about because uh, these cats are already doing what I'm talking about. Like this is basically what I'm gonna tell you is kind of just about taking this vibe into the club, which uh, has been a really big mission of mine for a while. And, uh, it's, it's, even though it seems kind of obvious when I point it out, it's, it's not that obvious to everybody. I don't even know if I'm going to hit the whiteboard because I'm going to try and just motor through all this stuff. So just op open your mind about it and, uh, and see if you can, can vibe with it. So one thing I've noticed, uh, and not just here, but maybe you don't know, but I've lived in a whole bunch of other places. I've, I've only lived here for four years. And um, it was really hard when I moved here because of a lot of things. Uh, I couldn't wrap my head around uh, starting again in a scene. I'm usually pretty deeply involved in the scenes that I live in, whether it's Toronto or Tokyo or where all the places that I've spent some time in, definitely in Victoria. But Vancouver seemed a little bit difficult, really hard to get into, but uh, after the four years, I, I just want to say I'm so thankful to uh, the people in this scene that come out to Gorgamesh every weekend and, and when we're playing there and the parties that I play and the promoters that have uh, hooked me up to play here and um, all the cool artists that I've met here that I'm playing their music and all that kind of stuff. I just want to say that um, I'm just so thankful to, you know, the, that I can get up here and nobody boos me and stuff and tells me to screw off and stuff like that. It really means a lot to me. It really, really does. So, thank you. Wow, man, the time is just torquing. I haven't even started. Okay, so basically the big concept that I'm just going to rush to is uh, something that I've noticed is there's a lot of producers in the city. I don't really like that word producer, by the way. It's a, it's a, it's a word that I think have, has changed a lot since um, in, in the years, and it's kind of a, it's a weird thing. It's like, don't rush to be a producer. Being a producer is like... Uh, what other people should call you. What you should be trying to be is an artist. 
That's the only thing you should be trying to be. A producer is what other people call you. He produced this, he produced that. He's a producer, I'm a producer. I get that the, I get that the language has changed, but for me, Quincy Jones is a producer. I don't really want to like say, hey, because I put out this thing on Beatport, I'm like Quincy Jones. I'm not at all like that. That's something we've got to be striving to be. Uh, being a producer is about making product. And making product is an essential part of what we're doing and what we're talking about, but it's not what we are as, uh, as the core. What we are in the core is, uh, as should be a creator or an artist, in, in my opinion. Okay, so anyway, besides that, uh, what happens is you get a lot of people in the city and they're making tons of music. They're, they're uh, in their bedroom and they're making music and they're inspired by people from Europe or Berlin or from wherever they're inspired by, you know, this is natural, this is the normal way. And then you get a whole bunch of local DJs. Now, they've been brought, kind of, kind of brought up, you should say, or come into the scene through, uh, it's weird, you know, in, the, in, in cities like this. In bigger cities, there's a natural thing happening, but it doesn't have to be a big city to get it rolling. I've seen through trial and error how it rolls. And when, when it happens is when you make, when you get rid of the disconnect between what the DJs are doing in that city and what the artists are doing in that city. In Vancouver, when I moved here especially, and still now, but, but, but not as much thanks to awesome things like this and what Adam Atma was doing with the Producers Forum and just different cool like DJs that are more open-minded and, uh, and starting to come around to this idea. Uh, and this idea isn't something that I've made up. This is something I've discovered from watching how scenes explode and how they work and how artists get bigger and how artists get successful and people reach goals and things. This is stuff that I study really, really hard because, you know, this is all I do. This is all I want to do. So, um, you know, and sometimes there's a little more to what it looks like on the surface. A lot of people, are, uh, what I was saying is, a lot of people are wrapped up in this thing of like, I want to get Ben Clock to play my records, or Nina Kravis to play my records, or so-and-so to play my records, or, or whoever to play my records. People that are famous, people that they read about on the internet or in media or whatever, but, or, or they want to get onto charts. They're always talking about Beatport charts. It's in the top 10 Beatport chart or whatever, uh, you know. None of that stuff, all of that stuff is great. I'm not here to diss that stuff and tell you that it's foolish, you know, caring about that. But it's nothing compared to hearing your music in a club and watching people dance to it. And that is what making a scene has always been about and always will be about. If you go to Berlin and you see the people rocking there, you know, a lot of that music is made within that scene. And that's why people are moving there to be involved in that scene and to be part of that scene. Do you know what I mean? We have DJs here, like my man Joel Armstrong or Sia Vash is in here. D different, different people, like from different scenes that, are, that, are, that have floors, that follow them, that are like commanding floors, right? It should be our goal as like, you know, people who are making music, producers, creators, artists, to get your music into those people's hands. Not just the famous guys, but those people's hands and make them play your, your shit. And it's up to us as the DJs who are in the club to be finding those artists and playing those artists. Like, dude, people in Europe don't care. Like, they don't need you to play their shit. They're already partying it up in, in the famous club that you're reading about. The people here need you to be playing their shit. Now, I'm not saying don't, I'm not saying play it if it's not dope, of course. The first rule of the game is we have to be making dope shit, you know? Yeah, it has to be good, man. For real, like it has to be better than you think it has to be. A lot of people think that it just needs to be marketed well, but that's bullshit. That stuff has been played out. That stuff doesn't work anymore. People have exhausted all those spammy sort of things you can do to get your music out there. It's been run over by young people. No one's even looking at that. People are looking at what's happening in the club, and that's where you need to get your music to be. So, you know, my idea is how to, to do that. now. I want to tell you, I'm going to take a drink of water, let that sink in a little bit, and tell you about uh, a story that happened to me in May, in Detroit, 
that got me thinking about an idea that we can all do to put in action to kind of like experiment with this, you know, just a second. Hey everybody, back of the room, we can hear you too. We love you. A few more minutes and we're back to music. Rennie's dropping some really great stuff for us here. I don't have much time, yeah, here so... Here we go. Yeah, usually I'm funner to listen to. I ramble more uh, and I make jokes and stuff, but I really just want to get down to the meat of this because I feel like this room is full of people that are exceptionally open to this idea. And, and if it could be put in action by just a few people, we could really see the results and that will make people stoked. Hold on. Yeah. I want to tell you about a concept I made with my man uh, Thomas D. Toon in Belgium this year in, uh, in Detroit and it's called The Pledge. And, uh, and this is what we do and I've got to tell you, it's worked for me. It's really worked for me, man. I didn't even know I was doing it and I didn't have a name for it, but when I came to tell my friend about this, he caught on to it right away and we called it The Pledge. Now, uh, Thomas D. Toon is a lot like people here. He's a cat. I put out one of his remixes on my label. He's dropping his first piece of wax on a Detroit label called Soiree uh, next month. Um, he's just a dude. He's young. He's 24 years old. He's a homie of mine. He's from Ghent, Belgium. He's a local DJ. He doesn't have tons of fans in his home base, but he makes really good music and he struggles to throw a club night every few months called Space Echo. That's really dope, actually. And uh, anyway, this guy comes to Detroit, you know, he came to Detroit, uh, not last year, but the year before, just to be around the people that he looks up to and likes his records. And I gotta tell you, he's such an awesome dude, he has such good charisma, that uh, he was taken under people's wing pretty hard. And um, has played with a lot of people in Detroit, like, Terrence Parker, he, all the cats from all those bands like Underground Resistance Cats love this guy because he's humble and he understands and he lives his music life like a student. He doesn't go there trying to sell you on a whole bunch of shit and, and, and big himself up all over the place. He's, he's there like trying to learn and that makes people want to mentor him and that is really the future in, in, of what we are doing right now in my opinion, is like this mentorship, this vibe that like Groundwork are putting together. I don't want to like blow smoke up Groundwork's butt too much, but really this this is really the shit. Like this is really what it's about in my opinion. Anyway, so we were talking, you know, late night. We were both staying at my at my friend Drive Train's uh, place in, in Detroit. He, he owns Soiree Records. And uh, we were talking about stuff and, you know, Here's my thing, as a DJ, I'm very serious about the craft of DJing, and I'm very serious about what I play. And in the, in the age of digital music, you have access to so much music, you know? Like, Beatport, you know, if you're buying all your music on Beatport, everything that you play, you're doing it wrong. Stop it, don't do it. You, you, of course there's good shit there, worldwide shit, international shit, like on all those kind of sites. You gotta get that stuff, of course. But that is not what DJing is about. That's not gonna set what you're doing apart from what other people are doing. You gotta be playing tracks nobody has. That if they wanna hear that, that stuff, they gotta book you. That's what it's all about. Now, you might think that sounds really competitive, but it's actually like a community kind of thing because a lot of the DJs that you know from being super famous have, have gotten that way from doing this, from supporting their crew and those records and being different than other DJs and standing out. And when it comes to say, hey, what's hot, what's good? They're there to push their crew, their city, their label, their stuff. That's how you. That's how you make it happen. Not by, not by emulation. You know, which is a big deal. A lot of people just want to emulate what they think is happening in Ibiza or what they think is happening in Berlin or wherever they're stoked on. But that is not how really dynamic scenes are made. Do you know what I mean? That's like a customer mentality. That's like the DJ as customer, which is not not what we're gonna not what we're gonna do. And, and these kind of things are sort of helping people understand the concept, how to think differently, how to think like an artist who's trying to get stuff done and try to get your art out there and, and for a reason and a purpose, you know? So anyway, I want to talk to you about the pledge. Now the pledge is simple. My pledge, I made my pledge for 50%. 
So, but actually my music, if you listen to it now, is more like 80%. All people I know, or people that I'm connected to. It doesn't mean I know them personally like they're my best homie. It just means they're on labels that know my music, DJs that know my music, music that I've traded with people, promos that people have sent me, uh, stuff, just things, like all this kind of pe people's music. My man Dronus, like this young cat, dude. I play this guy's music like religiously, dude. He's 21 years old. And there's other people like this all over the world, right? So I realize that because I'm in the industry, it's so easy for me to say, like, you know, I can, I can reach out to freaking whoever I want and get some new music. You know, that's one thing. But it doesn't have to be 50%. You can start from a small amount. You could say, if I have a chance to play at this club or that club, I'm going to say 20% of the music I play tonight is going to be my homeboys and people that I, or people that I know. Even just people in my city that you don't even know that are making good music. You have, the, the key is not what you do or how much of a number your, the pledge is or whatever. It's more about shifting the mentality to, to taking what you do as a DJ more seriously. It's like, I have power. I have some power to like make these people party to something and get into something. So, you know, instead of just like trying to emulate people in Europe by playing a bunch of European records, which is cool because the European records are dope too, and so that's why you don't pledge 100%. Of course, you need to you need to like play what you like as a DJ. So, you know, it's not just that. It's it's not just like a black and white issue. It's more about just being conscious of what you're doing when when you're doing it. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, you know, I'm doing that pledge. That pledge is, has been 50% for me. I'm at 20 minutes right now, so I think before I get deeper into some crazier stuff, I'm just gonna like open it up to Q&A because really that was the main meat of what I'm saying. It's just start playing shit that you know, that, you, that people know you know, and you will see the difference. Even if you think you can't, even if it sounds like nobody even knows what I'm playing. Trust me, when you're playing something in your club, in your spot, and you're on your dance floor, whether it's 20 people or 200 people, and there's someone in that room that you're playing their music and that comes on in between hot European records or whatever, that's a scene. Like whether it's being, whether it's like conscious or subconscious, whether people are just feeling it, whether it makes you feel different about what you're doing as a DJ, or whether it affects people in the thing when they come up and say, yo, that's a really dope thing, what is that? Oh, that's Dronus. He's 21 years old, he's from Vancouver. It changes people's mentality about what we're doing in the clubs here. You know, it changes the whole game, the whole ball game. Suddenly the, the, the DJs that are rising here are rising in tandem with producers that are, that are putting out music here. You know, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I want to make happen. So we're going to Q&A it. Joel? Uh, when you're just getting started out and you're desperate to like get some experience behind the decks, but you're totally keen on like building the scene, but you're kind of, in Vancouver specifically, straddling the ability to like dive into like some of the kind of like lower end of like Granville Street and also the underground crowd, but you're like not in either scene. Yeah, that's my world and your world. Can everybody at the back? Can everybody at the back hear the question? Oh, well, what would, what would Here, Joel, come ask it in the mic. Yeah, it's a good question. Joel, come and say this. Yeah. What would you do in um, a situation where you're trying to like just get started into the scene, but? you're having opportunities kind of like sort of in both worlds where uh, I, there is a bit of a divide between like the gravel street kind of like major stuff and uh, the kind of underground stuff. How do you, when you say you want to support the scene and you want to like play music of your friends but you're like required in the clubs that you're playing to like kind of fit the crowd, how do we, is it better to just like wait it out? Maybe and just like avoid that when you're kind of like new and getting started up because to be honest, when you're behind the decks, you need that experience, right? So whether you're playing like top forty shit or you're like trying to build the scene, but the problem is you can't. You're divided between two scenes. How would how would you like rectify that kind of situation where you're trying to like get your experience in? Great question. Yeah, good question. Um, now before I answer the question, I want everybody in this room to take it with a grain of salt because look, I'm no 
I'm no top. I'm no uh, guru. Okay. I'm just a. I'm just a beat maker and a DJ. Really, 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 really obsessed DJ. So it has. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to say everybody should think like I do, but personally, I think uh, any DJ who is trying to get started doing serious music, who's out there playing top 40, needs to fucking kick that to the curb ASAP. <laughs> If anybody is trying to make you play something because they think it's better for their bar or something, you're just playing in the wrong spot. And those things are dead. Those things are dead. You know, like you got to learn to play, say no. Like uh, I, I don't, I don't take every gig, and, and I definitely do not recommend taking every gig unless you, unless you're got your mind wrapped around being a top 40 DJ. Uh, then, you know, go ahead and do that and that's cool and weddings and all that shit. I have respect for that. That's not, I'm not trying to diss that. I'm not, I'm just talking from my personal thing. Like, I am a serious underground soldier. Like, I do not fuck with Top 40. Ever. Like, remixes, nothing. If I play, it, it, seriously, you couldn't pay me enough, you know? And I don't recommend that to the young cats that I'm trying to mentor because I think about house music and techno music as a very serious thing, like jazz music, you know, like uh, it's going to go on that long, it's been going on that long, it's going to change, it's going to get go through ebb and flow of commercial success and all that stuff, but that is not what I am focused on or what I'm involved in. I'm involved in the hard core of house music, the very, very, very core of it, like the real shit all the way 100% to the real deal, techno and house music. Now, I'm not trying to like, you know, preach that, but when, when I'm mentoring people, that's the mentality that I mentor them with. Now, not everybody has to be that way, but, but if you're, you know, if you're, I think there's a lot to be learned about programming, though, definitely from working rooms that you're not used to, you know, and I do not, when I'm talking about the, when I'm spitting vitriol about top 40 and stuff like that, it has nothing to do with the people on the floor. It has everything to do with the industry of the club and the bar sales and the this and the that and all the other bullshit that has nothing to do with music that affects the way our music is, is uh, experienced by the people on the floor. I'm really protecting them from it. Like, uh, that's how I feel. People on the floor are not as cheesy and lame as most club owners think they are. A lot of them want to hear good shit and can tell good shit from bad shit. And it can be pop, it can be anything. I don't care about genre. When I'm talking about underground, I, I'm into house music and techno and hip hop and all that stuff, but I'm talking nothing about genre. Under, to me, artists like David Bowie or Grace Jones or those kind of artists are so much more underground than a lot of the motherfuckers playing house music uh, in, you know, that I run into because uh, they're not. Do, they're, it's about the intent. It's about the reason for creating the art and what and and what the art is all about. It's really the difference between, uh, you know, commercial industry and art people. And I'm only able to relate for some reason very well with art people. So I have to put like uh, management and shit in, in between me and those people. Ready or it gets whack. About four and a half minutes left. How many questions do you want to squeeze in? One more. Hit me. Yeah. So, um, I think right now is a, like it's like a Come dividing up. line. Come on up. Come and say it. Come and say it. So right now in Vancouver, it's like it's a very critical point in our music scene, personally. I think. Mm -hmm. But with EDM blowing your right, it's a very interesting time for all of us, you know. So I just want to know what your thoughts are on the future of the scene, and like where do you think thoughts. it's gonna where do you think it's gonna go from here? Do you think we're gonna remain a closed like circle of underground music, or do you think no. is gonna blow over and like underground music yes. gonna blow up? Yes. <laughs> okay. Can, can you uh, can you give me a little amount of time? I I, of I gotta I I gotta answer that, and I think it's an interesting thing that I like talking to people about. So just just give me this one answer, and then we'll call it a day. Okay. Uh, let me think. Let me think about that. Okay. I think you're right. I think you. I think you probably. Your question probably comes from a suspicion um, that I have. I think a lot of things have changed in the last few years, and I think you're right. I think we are at a really interesting time, 
and a really cool time, an exciting time. I mean, a time where we can get this many people together in a room to listen to local production and talk about things that we're doing in our scene and stuff like that. I'm not even sure if, if this could be possible a few years ago when, because I spoke at the, when I first moved here, I spoke at the Vancouver Music Producers Forum, and people's, the, the, you know, I know it's a different thing, but really, I think people have whole new questions and way of thinking now, now, maybe from just seeing the way a lot of things have played out. So I think you're right to have that suspicion. And I think there's a big thing happening right now uh, in the world, um, everywhere, and it's uh, this. It says authenticity. Yeah. Authenticity. I agree. You know? That's what it's about, man. That's what it's about. And people are just, things that aren't authentic now, that we used to be able to market and spam and shove down everyone's throat and make a cool flyer for and have all the names on and 20 DJs and blah, 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 and this guy did this and that and a famous guy, all that stuff is losing all its power. You know, everywhere we go. You know, like EDM is, come on, man. Like, it's a joke to most people who even care about music, right? And even for the people who don't care about music, it's, it's fast becoming a joke. Like, you know? It's, uh, look at that movie that just came out. What was that called? We Are Your Friends? Are you serious? You know? That was called Zac Efron Takes a Pay Cut. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, that shit is the, that shit is the, the lowest, um, you know, movie debut or whatever it was famous for. And look, just for this kind of stuff, we got all these people. It's, uh, there is definitely a change. And the DJs that are going to make this city awesome and make our scene awesome and the records that are going to come out of this this scene and catch attention from people and all that kind of stuff are going to be grounded in authenticity. I guarantee it. 100%. Yeah. Woo! 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 So, just before I leave, um, there's, uh, you know, I had a, I had a motive for getting up here, not just to toot my own horn or whatever. I really do want people to consider this, this pledge thing, even if you don't call it the pledge. I know that's a really corny word, but a really, really corny way to think about it. But seriously, the DJs who are in this, like, it means so much to me if I walk into a club and I hear my man, I don't know who what DJs are in here, but like Sia Vash or Joel or, or any of these cats if I, that play techno and house music, if I walk into a club and hear my track, you know, uh, and, and, and that goes for anybody in here, that, man, it just means so much to me, more than, it's not just about getting as many bookings as you can and, and being everywhere and all that kind of stuff. You gotta think a little bit outside the box and expand your job description. Because this is a huge part of our job description. And the DJs that are gonna come up on, on this are the DJs in this city that are in tune with what's really happening here with the dudes in their bedroom. And the people in their bedroom and in the studio are gonna have a lot more motivation for making more acute and you know poignant music if, if it's not just about getting it on SoundCloud and a bunch of people in Brazil downloading it or whatever. It's about hearing it in the club. Because that's worth a million downloads, I swear to God. If you just hear it in the club and see the people dance to, to your music, that will get you over, man. That will inspire you to make even cooler and better shit. So anyway, thank you so much for your time. Randy Foster, everybody, give a big hand!